People can't live without a story, without a role to play. I'm going to be making a really radical change this upcoming year, and I'm really excited about it, but I'm also really nervous. The same elements that make a movie meaningful are the ones that make a life meaningful. I knew a character had to face his greatest fears. That's the stuff of good story. We've all heard or read or watched stories since, well, since we've exited the womb. Whether it's a good story in a book, our favorite binge-worthy TV show, or the latest blockbuster, rest in peace, the best stories have a strange, almost magical ability to capture our attention, transporting us into the worlds of the characters we love so much. And growing up, I love stories. I read a ton as a kid, my dad taking my sister and I to the library every week, and grew up with a healthy diet of Disney on VHS and DVD. Coming soon on video and DVD. I don't know about y'all, but whenever I've watched a really good movie, especially one with an adventure in it, whenever the movie is finished, I get up, wipe the popcorn crumbs off my pants, and get off the couch or walk out of the movie theater just imagining what it would be like to be the hero in that story. Hey. <laughs> Bro, I look ridiculous, man. And until recently, I never really thought about what makes a good story, well, I guess good. And I thought to myself, how can I live a life of adventure, of purpose, of meaning, like that character in the movie? How can I make my life as exciting as the people in the movie? After doing a little bit of reading, turns out a good story and a good life have a lot in common. And if that's the case, then there are two questions that we need to find the answers to. Number one, what are the elements of a good story? And number two, how can I use those elements to live a better life? Dude. Back to the video. Two books in particular were especially helpful. The first was a book called Story by Robert McKee. For those of you unfamiliar with McKee, he taught a storytelling workshop that has quite the distinguished list of attendees, including the writers, directors, and producers of movies and TV shows such as Forrest Gump, Friends, Law and Order, Seinfeld, Sesame Street, Toy Story, and the list goes on and on. The second book is A Million Miles in a Thousand Years by Donald Miller in which the author discusses what he learned from both taking McKee's course and having a movie created based on his life, which forced him to reflect on whether he himself was living a good story. Here's what I've learned. A story is a character who wants something and overcomes conflict to get it. If you think about it, that quote pretty much sums up all of our favorite stories. A character who wants something and overcomes conflict to get it. Take for example the much beloved mockumentary and quite possibly my favorite show of all time, The Office. Each character has something they want. Jim wants Pam, Michael wants to be loved, Hold on, hold on, they're lithium! And Dwight wants to be assistant to the regional manager. And through each episode, we are shown the characters finding ways to overcome obstacles to obtain that which they most desire. Now what if the characters didn't have any difficulty getting what they want? What if in the first episode, Jim walks up to Pam's desk, smooth talks her, and then Pam immediately agrees to go on a date? We would lose a ton of the dramatic tension that made those first couple of seasons so great, and would it really have an interesting story? The more difficulty or struggle a character has to go through to get what they want, the better the story. I've always thought, man, if I won the lottery, I'd be able to buy everything I want and could just spend my days sitting on a beach. But I'm beginning to realize that if I did that, eventually it would get really old pretty quick because I wouldn't be living out a good story. I wouldn't ever be challenged to grow or learn from my experiences because I wouldn't ever have a reason to. We need to have obstacles or challenges in our lives to live a good story. Robert McKee says, humans naturally seek comfort and stability. Without an inciting incident that disrupts that comfort, they will not enter into a story. A character has to jump into the story, into the discomfort and the fear, otherwise the story will not happen. Almost three years ago now, the COVID-19 pandemic arrived, forever altering the way we live and function as a society. This was the inciting incident of many new stories, unfortunately many of tragedy and loss, but also presented an opportunity to reflect and grow. My last shift before taking time off for my wedding and honeymoon, I was assigned to an older woman in her early 90s 
who unfortunately was nearing the end of her life, her body tired and worn from battling the virus. One of the last requests from her and her family was that she see her husband, who was also hospitalized, but was being treated in a different unit. Thankfully, we were able to place both beds in her room side by side, allowing this couple, married for more than 50 years, to spend the last few moments of their story together. As my shift came to an end and I left the hospital, I was looking forward to having an extended period of time off and excited to spend it with close friends and family at the wedding. But the thought of the couple spending their last moments together lingered in my thoughts. And as I was writing my vows on the morning of our wedding day, the thought of the couple lying together still playing in my head, I ended up writing these words. You are the first person I want to see when I wake up and the last person I see when I take my last breath. That encounter was the inciting incident that started a new story for me, my journey to find and learn to focus on the important things. Some examples of inciting incidents from TV shows and movies are Walt finding out he has lung cancer in Breaking Bad, Janice and Damien telling Caddy, beware of Regina George in Mean Girls, it's pronounced like Katie, and the death of Mufasa in The Lion King. As Robert McKee puts it in story, the inciting incident radically upsets the balances of forces in your protagonist's life. Now while most inciting incidents happen to a character without their input, Sometimes a character can create their own inciting incident and jump into a story. And we can do the same. We can create our own inciting incident, like deciding to make a change in our diet, buying a new home, or enrolling in school. Either way, whether an inciting incident happens to us or we decide to create our own, a good story has to have an inciting incident. The point of a story is the character arc, the change. If the character doesn't change, the story hasn't happened yet. If the point of life is the same as the point of a story, the point of life is character transformation. In a story, there is something called the character arc. A quick Google search tells us that there are three main stages or steps of the arc. In stage one, the character is introduced with some flaw or weakness. I'm just not the, the hero type, clearly, with this uh, laundry list of character defects. Then in stage two, the character is challenged in some way, and this challenge forces them to grow and change. And finally in stage three, the character returns to their starting point, but is now stronger and wiser thanks to the experience they have undergone. Earlier we established that a story is a character who wants something and overcomes conflict to get it. This is true, but in some stories, the character doesn't always obtain what they want, at least not what they originally thought they wanted. Instead, in the end, they find out that maybe the real treasure was the friends that we made along the way. And while this is a cliche and it actually is a meme, I think there is some truth in there. In the pursuit of our goals, whether it be earning a six-figure salary, buying our dream home, or having a billion subscribers or followers, maybe the real treasure is the lessons we learned along the way. Can I tell you what I've learned from my reading? I don't think any of that stuff that I just mentioned on its own makes a good story or a good life. And I want to emphasize on their own because there is nothing necessarily wrong with those things. But if there is no character development from the beginning of the story to the end when the goal is met, or if the character development is negative, then I don't think it makes a good story. Again, for the story to be good, the character has to develop and change for the better. Once I understood the power of story in my personal life, I wanted to know more about how to create a good one. I was getting up a little earlier, and interestingly enough, I was going to fewer movies. In a way, I'd started a new story about trying to find a story, and so I didn't need to escape my boring life anymore. So let's take everything we've talked about and use it to ask ourselves a few questions to help us live a better story. We established that a story is a character who wants something and overcomes conflict to get it. So we have to ask ourselves the first question. What do I want or what is my goal and what will I have to overcome to reach it? If you feel like you're in a rut or your life isn't going in any specific direction, think about what you're actively working towards. To be honest with y'all, when I finished school and started my first job, it was difficult because in a way, my story of earning my degree ended and I didn't really have any idea on what my next goal or career path was. So I started to find other ways to obtain happiness or meaning, like watching a lot of TV, scrolling on social media, and buying a bunch of new stuff. And while work was challenging and I was learning a lot, 
not having an end goal or purpose for the challenges made it hard to find meaning in the struggle. Ultimately, neither the work I was doing nor the material things brought me lasting happiness or meaning, and I now know it was because I wasn't participating in a good story. So we need to figure out what our goal is and what we have to do to get there. Question number two, what is my inciting incident? My story of searching for meaning and purpose in my life and work was incited by starting my first hospital job right at the start of the pandemic. But as we talked about earlier, an inciting incident doesn't always happen spontaneously. Sometimes we can create our own inciting incident. Like when I asked my wife to get me a camera for Christmas, which started my story of starting a YouTube channel, or the inciting incident that I've chosen to create for myself this year. I also knew from the McKee seminar that most of our greatest fears are relational. We think stories are about getting money and security, but the truth is, it all comes down to relationships. The change I've decided to make this upcoming year is that I am eliminating almost all optional purchases. Now, I haven't made an exact list of rules or allowed purchases yet. That will be for a future video, but I've decided to eliminate any unnecessary purchases for the year 2023. I recently re-listened to a book called The Year of Less by Kate Flanders, in which the author documents her experience and personal growth after eliminating optional purchases for a year. So I decided I want to take on the same challenge myself. Another reason is that I want to be able to save money and use it instead on things that are more important, like my family and friends. I think the tagline of The Minimalist fits here, and I think it sums up well why I'm doing this. Love people, use things, because the opposite never works. I'm gonna level with y'all. Nobody is gonna want to watch a story about a guy buying a bunch of camera gear and releasing two videos a year. No offense, Ben. No, no, I, I get it. Finally, the last question we have to ask ourselves is this. Is the goal I'm looking to achieve going to lead to positive character change? Simply put, will I be a better person at the end of this? Let's review the character arc by using my new goal, or story if you will, as an example. Stage 1, the character is introduced with some flaws or weaknesses. Now this was an extremely difficult task and took a lot of soul searching to find any flaws in my life, but after spending months trying to find one of my few imperfections, I found it. I buy too much stuff and I use it as a crutch to make me feel better when I'm feeling down. But again, very difficult to find anything wrong with me. As a specimen, yes, I'm intimidating. In stage two, the character is challenged in some way, and this challenge forces them to grow and change. Resisting the urge to buy new stuff will be difficult, because ever since I've started working full-time, I've been a faithful attendee of retail therapy. And especially when it comes to gear or electronics in general, it always seems like they are outdated the second you buy them. Take for example the gimbal I just got for Christmas. Literally a week later, DJI, the company that makes my gimbal, sent me an email with a promo hinting that they are releasing a new, smaller version of my gimbal. And for a split second, when I saw the email, to my shame, I felt a hint of dissatisfaction with my new and perfectly great gimbal. And when I mean great, it is so, so good, and I am so thankful for it but it is easy to start to feel dissatisfied when you compare yourselves or your things to the latest and the greatest. So I've decided I want to learn to not have the need to always have the latest and the greatest. Stage three, the character returns to his starting point, but is now stronger and wiser thanks to the experience he or she has undergone. I hope that on December 31, the final day of this year, as I celebrate with family and friends and welcome the upcoming year, I can look back on my year of less and be proud of what I've accomplished. I hope I can look back and see how much money I've saved. I hope I can be proud of how many videos I've created and how many people I've helped with those videos and how much better I've gotten both as a videographer and a storyteller. And ultimately, I hope I can look back and see that I've become a better person and that I've lived a good story this year. I want to live a good story this year.